Hello YouTube, welcome to part 12 of the fake Merc character study focused on our boy Hemingway. And you'll see that for this installment, the nickname has its importance because I'm going to be mostly focused on the fake Merc stuff. In reality, this represents 5% of all of his lies because he lies so much, but it's the one that he focuses on the most because it's the one that got him in trouble and therefore he's constantly trying to reshape the narrative around it, saying that, oh, I didn't do nothing wrong and I apologize, etc. All things that are wrong and I'm going to demonstrate why they're wrong. But on top of that, I'm going to dive deeper because the big problem I see with a lot of people who discuss Blahino is that they really don't quite understand the scope of the insanity of this entire fake mook stuff. It went really, really deep, and there's a lot of hidden ments that no one discusses. So I want to share it with you guys. But before we start, I have an update, of course, because as you know, we have successfully committed espionage on our boy Hemingway, meaning that I and all of you guys watching this video are going to spend the rest of our fucking life in prison. So I hope that you're ready. I, I call dips for the bunk bed. I'm on top. You do whatever you want. You can fight for the, the bottom bed if you want. Um, but it's going to be a fun ride. So the informations I got are fairly tame, meaning that he has been much more cautious with his means of communications, but he still hasn't squashed his bad habit of opening his mouth all the time. And therefore, I have new information, a lot of which is uh, regarding the current political situation. So I might make a full video discussing his political views, how he flip-flops, and the insane badass persona he tries to present. But I can tell you that I have an entire paragraph of this guy discussing how he would deal with the current Black Lives Matter situation, which could also fit in the racism discussion because, as you might know at this point, he really doesn't like black people at all. And I can tell you that the type of things that he prescribes to deal with that type of citizen, the, what I do believe he perceives to be lower class citizens, is extremely brutal and also completely hilarious considering that he's afraid of his own shadow and if you plug him in front of a six foot six black guy the only thing he's going to do is just try and run away as fast as he can which is not going to be super fast at all because our boy Hemingway is of course obese but there are other things that are not correlated to that that I want to discuss today because there are two points that I want to revisit before I start talking about the gun stuff and the military. The first one being the fake plates. I have pretty much in my head confirmed that the fake plates are indeed fake, especially the blue ones. But I had confirmation recently from him directly because he was asked by someone, or someone that might or might not be working for us, that they wanted to see a gym tour. And his answer to that was, oh, I'm just not going to do that because of random bullshit excuses he gave. And that made me realize one thing. The reason why he doesn't want to make that gym tour is because the second he starts getting a little bit too close to these fake plates, it's going to be extremely evident because they look sort of decent from afar. But when you zoom in, you can see that they're not really made of steel. And that's why he's trying to prevent that. It's also the reason why he's never shown them on camera is because they are fake. And on statement number two, I know I'm going to be disappointing some of you guys, but you know, I have to be fair with these videos and you know, you have to give credit where credit is due. I want to come back on something I said. I said in the past that he was lying about being five feet nine and he was actually five feet seven. And that was wrong. I apologize to Blue Who. I apologize to you guys if, if you are disappointed. He's actually not five foot seven. He is a confirmed five foot four. Meaning that via an incredible scientific team that I do believe works for NASA, we have, and I say we, I didn't do that, some guys have managed to compile enough information matching the size of his plates, the size of the rack, and the size of everything that we know is calibrated and standardized size, and they managed to calculate exactly his height via the camera footage that he gives, and it comes up to between five feet four and five feet five. And that could even be lower because the camera is placed at an angle that makes him look taller and that might have skewed the calculations. But when you think about it, doesn't that make a ton of sense? 
Because a lot of things with uh, Blue Who and even the people who really don't like him is he lies so much that your brain at some point short circuits and you start thinking, okay, there is no way a human being lies that much. He must, he must be saying the truth here and there. Or the truth might not be as bad as you might think. And that's your mistake because we're dealing with a pathological liar that doubles down on everything he says. He triples down. And trust me when I tell you that everything that exits his lips is a lie. Because if you tell me, oh, maybe he said the truth with this. Bro, we're talking about a guy that said he had a dozen threesomes with cheerleaders. Do you truly want to give credit to that person? I can tell you for a fact that I now at this point, I'm convinced he's below five foot five. And the proof is not just in the calculation, all of which I will reveal eventually, but more importantly, it was always there for us to see. And it's just that we couldn't wrap our heads around someone being such a liar. But if you look back at all videos of him, there are videos of him in his gym where women walk by him and they're taller. And that's when he was wearing his boots with like the massive heels. How is that even possible? Unless the girl was six feet, but you can see from the proportions that she wasn't. And then there's that weird video of people, I think you remember, of the, the guy who looks seven feet tall and massive, who walks by him. And I'm pretty sure this guy was like five feet 11 and 200 pounds. It's just that Bloho is an actual garden gnome. He is what he calls Alpha Destiny, which is a dwarf, a midget. The only thing is that he doesn't have the beard and the hair to make up for. So he's, he's a shaved dwarf. It's insane, but it matches. It makes a ton of senses. And we also know that Moon Cookie was around five feet seven. But if you compare footage of them shooting together at the range, he's smaller than her and he was wearing platform boots, meaning that he was at least a full two to three inches shorter. So we're actually dealing with someone who is a massive manlet. And that explains everything. It's the reason why he hates Alpha Destiny so much. It's the reason why he has to compensate and act so much is because he's super tiny. And another proof of that is, and it's, it's a man that I'm going to get to. I know that a lot of you guys want to hear about that. There was an interview of Bloho two years ago where he looked at the end of his rope. Like he, he looked like he was just done binging on meth, teeth fully depleted, nothing to show for in the eyes, completely dead. He still gave that interview for a reason that completely escapes my grasp. And the guy in the interview, who is someone who doesn't even lift, mugs him into oblivion to the point, and that's a little scoop that I'm going to reveal to you guys because I confirmed that, he brought a gun to that interview. He had a gun in his pocket. And it, I know it blows the human mind. Why would someone bring a gun to an interview? Well, it's because he was terrified. You can see in that interview that every single time the interviewer moves towards him, he backs off. Like he, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And at some point, I don't know if the guy, I think his name is Alex. I don't know if the guy who did the interview knows how close he came to being shot. But at some point, he does like a weird gesture towards Bloho who reaches in his pocket. So he was ready to pull out that gun, meaning that he is armed and dangerous. I don't know if he would actually hurt someone, but I would encourage people to not try their luck because at this point, he has nothing to lose, all right? He might be a gnome, but you can still trip and fall when walking around your garden if you don't pay attention. So be careful with that. So that's that, fake plates, fake height. What else am I going to uncover? Well, I can tell you that there's a lot more to uncover, a lot of which I'm keeping secret. And I want to create a little tension here to say that I am fairly disappointed in some of you guys because I've told you last time that I'm slowly infiltrating what I can to get as much mints as I can for you. I'm trying to stash it like a squirrel stashes nuts to give you during winter when it's bone dry and there's no mints because Genova doesn't upload anymore. And yet, some of you guys went behind my back and you tried to dox my sources. You tried to see who was giving me information and you tried to actually, you know, scare them off like you've done multiple times in the past. It's the reason why I don't reveal my sources. We have lost connections with Broho's uh, past wives, with Moon Cookie, that could have given us some insanely juicy mains. And because of some of you that just cannot act properly and civilized, we have lost that. 
I'm in communication with one of them that I'm not going to cite to try and get an interview going. So we'll see if we can make that work. But I want to say that I am hereby fully, uh, what is the term? I'm disowning some of you. You are not part of the movement anymore. You are trying to work for Bloho. You hate him so much and you don't realize that you work for him. Let the mains flow. Let them come slowly. I'm going to give them bit by bit. But if you rush it, you're just going to blow it off. But I managed to uh, actually figure out who was doing that and you're not going to do anything. So that's that. Let's get today into the educated mains and the theme of this episode, which is the military. Because a lot of people know blow through that for multiple reasons that are funnier one than the other and I'm going to get into. So, as you remember from previous installments, our boy Hemingway started claiming that he was a mercenary. And he did that for multiple reasons, because he tried to present himself as a badass, he tried to create that persona and image that he wishes he were, he tried to have some relevance on YouTube fitness, etc, etc, a lot of things. The most important being that he tried to actually scam his way into opening a tactical school, which never happened, thank God. And it never happened because people saw through it and he was exposed via the work of Lane Norton, who, of course, has his place in heaven and he is a prophet of the men's, now and forever. And all of that, in reality, was on the wall, like the, the, the writing was on the wall, because if you look at the shooting and the, the work he was doing at the range and you look at his groupings, you could tell immediately that the guy didn't know how to shoot, meaning that a lot of people came afterwards, experts in their field, and they were like, yeah, that, that guy doesn't know how to shoot at all. There's a video of him shooting down range, and I think at some point, the net that is supposed to catch the, the empty shells falls, and it makes him trip over, and he's like, oh, I think the guy next to him almost got his head blown off by complete mistake by Blahino, who's a complete spug. You really don't want that guy to have a weapon in his hands. And yet he claimed that they were amazing, and that's really the lack of awareness of that guy. He went and showed the groupings where you could immediately see that they were garbage. He would post them on Instagram and he would actually tag people that he hated on the groupings like, oh, I'm going to do that to you. But it's something that he kept doing. And the funny thing is that this ties directly to a story which I consider to be top five. Top five favorite Black Hino Mentor for Times where he recounted the time where he was in, I think he claimed it was Afghanistan, and he was, uh, he was trying to apprehend a group of terrorists that he calls Ajis, of course, because he's trying to pretend that he knows what he's talking about, which ties directly to his hatred of Muslims, also a topic that I'm going to get into. But he planned the video by pretending that someone, one of his subscribers, asked him the difference between two types of shells and bullets and which ones could penetrate a human body. Like, who even asks that? Like, Blow, we know it's you. We know you logged onto your account and you asked that question to yourself to, to pretend to be an expert. But what he failed at entirely is actually doing that because he said a weird story about, oh, I was camouflaged and there was a man on a donkey. Like, how stereotypical can we get? So you arrested a Muslim terrorist who was riding a donkey. Was he also eating couscous as he was riding the donkey? Was he reciting the Quran? Like, this is so cliche and I, it blows my mind that he doesn't seem to understand. I know that terrorism is sort of grassroots over there, but donkeys, donkeys, it, like in the middle of a plane field, the guy is supposed to be a little bit careful about his life. He knows that there is armed presence and he's just riding a donkey in the open. Nothing is going to go wrong. So of course, in his story, if I remember correctly, the guy got shot and he got sliced in two. Which is the classical trope of like movies where they're like, oh, look at the power of the bullet. It slissed the guy in two. And he recounted that story. And I think in the story, he pretended he wasn't the one shooting because he already he tried to like misdirect like, oh, I'm not the one bragging. It's just a story that we have with my brother in arms. But that was what he believed to be an actual account of what, it ha what happens on the battlefield. And all of that ties directly to the reason and the inspiration for the fake MOOC. Because we have now at this point certified and guaranteed that most of his life and lops come from movies. Meaning that he is the 12 year old kid who watches a movie and immediately, you know, identifies with the main character and starts to invent a life in their brains. 
But the difference is that the 12 year old goes home and then he, do, he does his math homework and he forgets about it. Bloho actually tries to pass it off as his own life. And so he did that with the helicopter last time with the rig, which someone actually showed me the, the movie sequence. It was from King Kong. And then this one is from American Sniper, meaning that he saw that movie and he just fell in love with it for some reason, even though that's not the message of the movie. And he identified as the sniper guy and he tried to become the sniper guy because if you listen to him, he was shooting at, like, I think he claimed a mile. He could shoot someone from a mile when he was 10 years old. Like, I think he would say, like, don't wind, if that even matters. He claimed that he was a hunter of exotic game, all of which to create that weird idea and image in everyone's mind that he was that badass sniper. Thing is, if you know what the role of sniper is, it's not like FPS, it's not like Counter-Strike. A lot of that is carrying heavy, heavy equipment, then posting, and most of the time when you're posting, you're covering a group or a troop that is doing the dirty work. It's not, you're not sniping people from like the tower, like an eagle, that that's from movies. And I also want to say, can you imagine that guy trying to carry a sniper in the sands of Afghanistan and all of those swims they have? He would gas out within five minutes because we know that he has no cardio. And back in the days, remember, if we look at the mugshot, he was obese. So you're telling me that the American military, when trying to actually deploy soldiers, did that by picking a fat guy with a pencil mustache that apparently had an IQ of 70. Right. How does that make sense? It doesn't. But understand that the explanation he gave for that when people were like, why on earth would you be sent there? Is because he said that at the time, the Vietnam veterans were not available because of PTSD. And therefore, they had to send in French, fresh troops. I said French troops. Please don't send French troops anywhere. And so therefore, he was sent, which it's a terrible lie. I mean, and it's the reason why he got exposed so massively, because that lie pissed people off. Because again, he tried to correlate that with him having PTSD. And he had this massive spill that people remember who was like, oh, I have p fucking PTSD from the day I've, I blew the guy brains off. I still see it in my dreams. PTSD is not funny. Like, actively making fun of it by pretending to have it. And therefore, what ended up happening happened, he got exposed, the video was shown to active military, with a tiny bit of help of Lane Norton, who admitted that at the time he's the one who promoted the video and the article, meaning that after the, the entire thing with Bloho, where he basically won, but Bloho didn't pay anything because he's a parasite and he owns nothing, Lane Norton was happily on his computer looking up, I don't know, recipes with the maximum amount of cholesterol possible, and he just happened to find, just randomly happened, to find a stolen, uh, stolen Valor article about Bloho. And oh, surprise, his credit card was right there. And in two easy clicks, he spent $200 and massively promoted the article all throughout the internet. Ain't that great? Just random. <laughs> I think Lane doesn't want to admit that he hates Bloho so much that he most likely did all of it on purpose and more. But we appreciate you for it, Lane. You did a great job. And therefore, that's what happened. The entire thing got exposed. And he never apologized, of course. As I said last time, he sent death threats to veterans, telling veterans that if they approached him physically, he was going to kill them. Like, you remember that famous line, which, which goes, first off, I still hear the sonic boom flying through and... I don't, I don't flinch anymore when I hear that, that whoop, that whoop that goes by my head. I don't flinch anymore. And if you approach me physically, you better not be a fucking pug. He couldn't even pronounce the thing properly. A joke of a man. But the fake muck story continues because one, he tried to teach Moon Cookie how to shoot, which also goes to show how delusional she was that at no point she realized, hey, I'm taking advice from a literal monk and none of that applies in real life. But he almost had students and he starts people following him. So of course, there's always people that are dumb enough that someone unintelligent like him can manipulate them. But he's the typical better gun nut, which is this persona in reality and the persona a lot of these guys were 
it blows the mind how often those weird redneck Texan alt-right super imperialistic guys have shit lives. Like when you look at their lives, you're like, okay, so you hate wealth, you hate welfare, but you're on welfare. You hate black people because apparently they're lesser than you, but you've done nothing with your life, even though you were privileged. You have that obsession with guns, but you are a complete coward without them. None of that computes. It's it's all a facade. But it's who he is. He's a complete better, and you can see that with the way he interacts with others. He needs a gun in his pocket to conduct an interview. That says everything about the guy. But it's because, just like with a lot of these guys, he associates it with masculinity and power. And that's the strength cope. It's not just him, right? It's very prevalent. It's guys who cannot, in themselves, invoke and summon what it's like to be a man and to have some valor. So they try to steal it. They try to create it with factitious means. And for him, it was that. It was pretending to be that badass guy who was sent on the powder walls or whatever that even means. Hunting exotic game, which I think, again, the exotic game line comes from a movie. Let me know in the comments. I think it was Predator, if I'm not mistaken. Knowing also that the Hemingway thing was also from Predator. Hemingway thing for the people who don't know, because I have some amateurs in the comments who don't even know that meant. Top five men's again, guys, read up on your Blackino men's. You have to be caught up to follow these videos or else you'll just be lost. We're swimming in piss here. You need to learn how to swim first, right? We're diving deep. So the Hemingway man, for the people who don't know, is when he got caught doing the fake book stuff, he went, contacted a friend of his girlfriend, a friend that most likely he knew because his girlfriend stripped for him, and asked the guy to make a fake video claiming that he knew Blahino. And in the video, the guy was sitting with a, a, a rifle and he was like, oh, I saw a stolen valor article with the name of, uh, of, of Jason Bloho. And then I, I saw him with a shit eating grin on his face and the 308. He was always so fond of the 308. That's all boy Hemingway. And that's where it comes from. In the thing, he pretended that his code name back in the days was Hemingway. And he thought it was cute. And therefore, it's now used to troll him because Blow always gives us the weapons to make fun of him because he's a clown and he's our personal lol cow. But most importantly than that, funnily enough, nowadays, if you go on his page and you ask him, hey, can you tell us more about the Hemingway stuff? He's like, whoa, Hemingway? Never heard of it. He's, he's playing dumb, pretending it never happened. And he does that with the non-negotiable too because the non-negotiable, and I'll get to that because it's one of my favorite too, comes from a very important and intrinsic moment of his career. But before that, I want to say also that for someone who's so masculine and powerful, it's interesting that he uses lightning to hide his fat. He's constantly tr trying to uh, make the light hit him in a certain way so that the shadows can cover his belly so you don't see that he's super fat, which, by the way, doesn't work, bro. I mean, you are a seal, but not a Navy seal. You're the actual animal. We can see your blubber. Like you can hide it as much as you want. You can put a dress on a seal. It's still a seal. And on top of that, the belt thing also doesn't work. We've seen your hips, bro. You could have quintuplets and not even fill it. You're built to give birth. Thankfully, you were born a man, so you're not going to reproduce. Connected to that, there is, as I said again, the fake look stuff, which is hilarious because he cannot run, he cannot shoot, and he has zero situational awareness which is interesting, and if you want to have a good laugh, type in YouTube, Jason Blow, Situational Awareness, click the first video, it's a recomp, it's a recomp. He has infiltrated my brains. He's, it's a, a, a recapitulation, a collection, a compilation of all of the moments where this idiot bonked his head on a barbell, which happens very often. Like every month or so, he'll upload a video where he bonks his head, one, because he's too lazy to edit it out, and two, because he doesn't, does, he doesn't know. What's going on around him, he doesn't know. Most likely, he killed his dog by dropping a barbell on him when he was doing that weird phase of Olympic weightlifting lap, phase during which he also destroyed his wall. He, there was a hole in the wall for the longest time, and he wouldn't say why. I think I know why. It's because he just tried to do a snatch or something, he fell on his butt, and he just created that hole. Thankfully, it's section, uh, section 8, so it's taken care of by taxpayers. We have fixed Bloho's wall. Great. I'm sure he would have loved to have a hole on his wall. I mean, that would have a lot of different uses that our boy would have been able to fully enjoy. 
a topic that I'll also get into. But for the uh, situational awareness, it also comes from a video where he tried to teach people how to have situational awareness that he apparently grasped when he was on the battlefield. Which again is, is funny because of the, the head thing, the fact that he doesn't know what's going on around him, and the fact that, one, there's videos of people following him and he doesn't re realize it. And by following him, I mean, they're right, like they're here and he's right there. Like they're filming his bald head and he's right there and he doesn't know it. And he's also never managed to catch any of the hajis, the terrorists in public that actually follow him and report back on his uh, acts. But that reminds me of something because I didn't really expand on the haji stuff. And you're like, what is haji? Well, I'm not an expert on that, but a haji is apparently like a, a mujahedin. It's like a, a, a Muslim fighter, which is a term he used to refer to the people that he apparently hates. Because when he made a video explaining how badass Texans are, and he had that knife, and he was like, oh, it was after the, the Charlie Hebdo shooting. He was like, oh, if, if we catch Muslims in, in, Tex in Texas, like we are going to slit their throat and let them suffer, and then we'll feed them to the pig. Like... And they've been to Texas, but I don't think that's part of the, the customs here. It's, I'm fairly sure that that's not what pigs eat. I don't know. Maybe Blahan was more about me than pigs because he's one of them. But connected to that was the Haji stuff because he detests Muslim to the point where when Lane Norton exposed him and a lot of people came after him, in his brain, he constructed an, an idea and a, a scenario where it was Muslim terrorists coming after him. Which, blue who, I know pig is, is haram in, in Islam, but don't, no one is coming after you. Not in that capacity, at least. Terrorists have better things to do, right? You're taking care of that yourself. You have almost no teeth. You're going to develop sepsis eventually. Like, they don't need to send fighters to your doorstep. They can just wait. They can just look at your videos every year and see that you are going to eventually not meet Hala, because I don't think you're ever going to meet any god or maker, but that's all going to be gone, and that would be an excellent thing. So, to connect back, as I said, he also has poor eyesight, which for someone who's supposed to be able to shoot super far away is interesting. And all of that made him also laugh as a soldier every single chance he got. I think also in a weird way and, uh, and you know, a, a tentative to scare people. Because he really doesn't want people to find him. And he wants people, I think, to believe that if they do find him, they're going to be in trouble. Which is not the case, because Bloho literally ran away from Cassidy Campbell, of all people. Cassidy Campbell, for the people who don't know it, it's not a porn star. I know the name makes you think of that. It's actually a guy who used to lift and was never super big. I think he was like 5'7", maybe 130 pounds, 50 pounds. Uh, and he was very, very skinny, not scary looking at all. And he eventually went up to meet Bloho at his gym. And you know what Bloho did? He ran away. Like he literally waddled his fat ass home because he was afraid of being confronted. One, because I do think that if you could see a video with him and Cassidy, you could realize that, hey, he's really, really short. Again, go back to the videos with him and Matt August from way back in the days, from the only expo he did, He's shorter than all of these guys, who are all manlets. So yes, he is 5'4", confirmed. But there is no fear to have concerning Blue Who, at least not in the sense that he's going to shoot you to prove he's a badass. He might shoot you because he's a spaz. And we've seen that with the weird tutorial videos he made back in the days when he was trying to pivot his channel from lifting, which he hates, onto guns, which he believes to be something that is going to make him money. And he taught people how to draw a gun and shoot when confronted by someone. An instruction video that is barely watchable because he breathes into his mic so much that it's unbearable. And on top of that, his advice was, you tell, you bring your head up, head up like this. You said, guy, okay, stand back, you're getting too close. You're getting too close. And if he takes another step back, you draw. Pretty badass. I don't, I, pretty badass, not practical at all, because if a guy is attacking you physically, doing this is not going to stop him, but it's the way he thinks it works in real life. I think he, he watched too much uh, Texas Ranger, Walker Texas Ranger with Chuck Norris, because he used to do that thing with the hand. 
But uh, that's, that's Bloho teaching you how to shoot a gun. Do you want to take advice from that guy? Knowing fully also that in this case, he said multiple times that he would shoot you dead if you approach him physically, which again, what, what does approach him physically mean, Blue Blue? How do you approach someone non-physically with, with your spirit? With, with just, you project? Is it a nether beast thing again? Are you in contact with him again? We spoke about this. You, you are not allowed to contact him. You become too crazy. But it is also with him the, uh, the, 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 the field of one-liners and sentences that he thinks make him sound badass. For example, he, he spoke repeatedly about negative body, uh, body language, I think. Meaning that to him, if you come up to him and he can see in you with, with his insane and situational awareness and his perfect eyesight that you are like negatively approaching him, then he's going to shoot you preemptively. And he wants you to know that he can get away with it scot-free, no, 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 no charges pressed because it's Texas. I don't know if you've ever been to Texas, but in Texas it is written in the law that if you approach someone with a negative body language, and you confront them physically at their expo, then they are allowed to shoot you dead. It's in the law. I mean, he, he, he's just applying what Texas taught him. He's just a Texan boy. And so at expos, he claimed that the reason why he wouldn't show up at expos is that he wanted them to give him the right to carry his guns at all times. And he said for me and my girl to carry guns and be strapped at your expo. And he wanted the written permission to shoot people dead if they approach him with... Blue Blue, it's, it's an expo, it's the point of the expo. People are going to come up to you. The few mentally ill fans that you still have will come up to you. Don't shoot your fans dead, it's the last thing you have, please. But all of that was connected because he was starting to get some heat from none other than Michael Hearn. Michael Hearn, the legendary natty bodybuilder, who is also a two times black belt, who can squat 800 pounds and who is totally, uh, totally not uh, using implants for his hair. Which, if you think about it, the difference between Mike and Blue is that Mike is good looking and successful. And if he wasn't, we would have two blowholes on our hands, which would be a terrible situation. But Mike constantly sent threats to uh, Blablino because, of course, I think Blow was the first one to make a, a Nelly or Not video about him. So it pissed him off. Now he, it, it doesn't even touch him anymore. I mean, but... Back in the days, it, it did. And so it was a, a, a strategy for Jason to try to explain why he wouldn't show up. It's because people didn't let him kill Michael Hearn, which don't, don't, don't kill the guy. I mean, I, I know he's annoying, but he's also a massive meme generator. He's sort of like you. you he's a lower cow, but he's a successful one. He makes money off of making people laugh. You make pennies. Eight bucks, that, that ring a bell. This... This one, I wanted to talk about this one for a very long time. I just want to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything about the Michael Hunt situation. Oh yeah, Jason actually ended up claiming that he won, meaning that he said that Mike was so afraid of him that he retracted his claims and he wouldn't talk about him anymore. N no, that's not what happened. What happened is that you're so irrelevant that people don't talk about you because it's a waste of time. Even within the realm of YouTube fitness drama, you are just a waste of oxygen. People won't even utter your name because it's useless. So Mike just moved on to the to a biggest, juicier and less smelly fish and Blue Who claimed victory, of course, without leaving his shack. Because that's how you win fights, apparently, in the wood of Jason Blue Who. And to get to the thing that I wanted to discuss, we're going to talk about the fish hook. But before we get to the fish hook, let me check the time. All right, I think we can go for another 10 minutes. So the fish hook thing. Fish hook thing is an interesting story in reality because what happened is that he recorded a video preemptively where he had a black eye and he told that weird convoluted story about going to a bar with a, a female friend. He really wanted to know that she's female and it was the, the, the girlfriend of a friend and he treated her like a gentleman. He really wants also you to know that he's a gentleman and tip of the hat to you, my lady, even though he doesn't wear a fedora, thank God. I mean, at least it would, it would cover the bald head, P.S. not bald. 
Oh, I, ha I also have to talk about the costume because there is this legendary video of Blahino back in the days where I think he was going to a wedding and he was wearing that cheap garbage suit that he, you, he paid 45 bucks in Chinatown for that suit, okay? And he loaned it. He couldn't even afford it. And that suit was completely ill-fitting. It looked like an elephant wearing a drape. That's the best description I can give. But he somehow tried to turn that into a positive. So it's a strange video where there's a, a zoom on his on his butt. I, I'm gagging just talking about it. There's a zoom on his butt and he's talking to you. Oh, oh my God, I'm actually gagging. Woo! Sorry about that. It's just, it's traumatizing. I have PTSD, guys. And he's talking about the, the, the glutes and how the costume, you need to have pants that show that you have a squat booty, which, I mean, just gain 100 pounds and put, a, put on a tracksuit, you're going to have a squat booty. Is it muscle? No, it's, it's fully disgusting. But the funniest thing is that he was looking like, you know, little boys when they go into their father's closet to, uh, to dress up, to act like their dad, and like the, the suit is way too big for them. It looked like this on him. And I know it's a memory that he cannot really relate to because for him it was going into his mother's closet to wear high heels and dresses. But in this case, it looked like this because he was floating because he has no upper body and he has insanely short clavicles. Even someone like me who has short clavicles is shocked by the ratio that he has between his hips and his shoulders. So he tried to invent a story about, you know, having big legs and people liking it. And then he went to the wedding. No one spoke to him because, of course, because he's completely socially inept. He just ate 50% of the wedding cake and he went home. Poor wife. Can you imagine trying to dance with that guy at a wedding? Can you imagine him dancing? If someone can find a video of him dancing, that would be an amazing moment. But I do know that the people who give me information are pretty amazing. So maybe there's a chance that you're going to find that. So that's the massive tangent. I'm very sorry. It's just there's so much to say about the guy. So back to the fish hook. He spoke about the fish hook. He wants to know he's a gentleman. He took very good care of the girlfriend, of a friend, and he brought them to a bar. And in this bar, another friend was being belligerent with the girl. And he said, hey, you have to, you know, you have to back off. You're getting too close. You back off, kid. You're getting too close. And the guy didn't like it one bit. So he attacked him. And Blue Who put him in a, in a weird position. Because apparently he has a black belt in whatever grappling sport that he invented in his brains. And he controlled the guy. But then he said, hey, can I let you go? And the guy said yes. And then the guy sucker punched him. Which he says is the explanation for the, dark eye, the black eye. And then he said that he did the fish hook. No, before that, when he did the grappling move, he did the fish hook. A fish hook, according to Blue Blue, is when you put your fingers into someone's mouth and you pull like this, which I know is a move that is not allowed in MMA, but it's not allowed in MMA not because it's effective, it's because it's crass. And on top of that, you run a massive risk of people biting your fingers off. But here, he, he pretty much presented that as like a, a, a no-touch death move. Like, oh, if you do that, it paralyzes the opponent. I think he confuses fish with people. Because if you hook a fish, yeah, he's paralyzed because he can't move. But people are not fish. And so his story just blew up in midair. But with him, you also have to always look beyond the lie. When he tells the lie, it's to camouflage something else. And that lie was there to present a grandiose image of him. Because it made him look like someone who is protective, who is a soldier. Because he claims that after the black eye, he just got up untouched, which... In real life, you know that he cried like a bitch. And then he actually, the, the bouncers went up to him and he talked them down. And then he went and sung karaoke with the bouncers. Have you ever met bouncers? They are not the nicest, nicest people for a good reason. They're dealing with drunk cards every single day. It's a shit job. And on top of that, when they're done with their shift, they go home. The last thing they want is to hang with some overweight guy who claims to be ex-military at a karaoke of all places. He always tries to paint those picturesque images of like movie. It's, it's a scene from a movie. It's the, the, the guy who had a bar fight and then he has a karaoke sing-off with the bouncers. It's like a Disney movie, but that's not your life, Jason. It really isn't your life. I think the bouncers looked at you for one reason. They're thinking, hey, is that guy going to come back later to shoot the club because no girl wanted to talk to him? But to get to the real reason why he got a black eye... 
There are three potential explanations and a fourth one that is a little bit troll that I'm going to give to you. The first one, Moon Cookie just punched him because she was violent and he's a wimp. So most likely she, he, did, she, he did something she didn't like. She punched him and he had to come up, come up with a story. Number two, he's a complete spaz. So he just bonked his head onto something. Most likely a doorknob because as we know, he's a garden gnome. And so he's, he has to reach for the knob and maybe at some point he just bonked his head into it. Kids do that all the time. Number three, he actually went out and that's the one that I think is true. He went out in Texas and someone recognized him, went up to him, confronted him physically with negative body language and punched him in the face. Just punched him in the face. And you know that Jason just fell on his butt, looked up and was like, oh, and just did nothing. And the guy most likely told him, hey, if I see you again, I'm going to shoot you. And so Jason also never went out ever again. That's, in my opinion, what happened. And then number four, I tracked down a weird testimony of a guy that I wasn't able to contact because he, he, never, he left no alibi behind, guys. No alibi. He dusted his tracks and left no alibis. So he must be someone who's also trained like Broho at the farm at Langley. But it's a guy who claimed that he went to a bar, he was chatting up a girl, and Jason came up to him and started trying to get the girl to himself, to which the guy said, hey, let's take that outside, and he kicked, kicked Bloho's ass. I don't believe in that story for one reason. There is no way in heck that Bloho has the balls to, one, go up to a woman, and two, go up to a woman that is being chatted up by a guy. He doesn't have it in him. That's that's alpha behavior. He's too better for that. It's not possible. He gets like the, lo the, the lonely girl. He gets the single moms. He gets the desperate, uh, the desperate woman who isn't really all there in their heads. That's his like target. That's what he can get. But the rest, it's not possible. And I just spoke about the, the farm at Langley. In reality, it's something that I never really discussed. But it's, it's been spoken about so many times that I can just do it quickly. The farm at Langley is not where CIA trains. It's not where those agents train. And that's what he claimed to be. Or FBI. I think, it, no, it's CIA. It's not FBI. And so he couldn't even bother to Google where the actual facility to, for training was. And so his entire story was just, of course, of course, destroyed. But he also claimed, and that's another lie, that camouflage is a lie, that he was back in the days paid in armament and training. First off, mercenaries work for money. Tell a mercenary, yeah, I'm going to send you to Zimbabwe and I'm going to pay you in, in, in bullets. The guy is going to tell you, who do you think I am? Um, you pay with, me, pay with money or with nothing. But, but for him, he couldn't say that because, of course, then he would have to explain why he's completely destitute. Because if you're a mercenary, you're supposed to have some cash flow. He has none. And so the format Langley was also a fabrication, of course. And there's another thing that I forgot because there's so much to say, but I am most likely going to remember eventually. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I, I mentioned that already, but the, uh, the American sniper thing also spurred him to buy a trap bar that he used for like two weeks. And then he just stopped because he just wasn't good at the lift uh, because he has weak quads. But it's funny how he saw that in a movie and someone who spent 20 years lifting weights couldn't understand that it wasn't really the best idea to get a trap bar. He wanted to look like uh, the guy from the movie so bad that he just had to do that purchase. He's terrible with money. And that is going to conclude this segment. I do think that I have this to say too. Because as I said, he called out veterans. He called them stupid because his version of the fact was that one, he was trolling with the fake milk stuff, which is a lie. And... He complimented that by saying that he was actually advocating for veterans by trying to protect our Second Amendment rights and that by coming after him and sending him threats, they were actually endangering their situation with politicians, which is really despicable. Like He cannot take responsibility so, po so bad that he is trying to present the treatment that veterans receive in America onto their behavior. Like he's saying, oh, you're treating, treated like shit and you will be treated like shit. Because you behave like this. No, no, it's because you did something terrible and you got called out by the community immediately. Like those stolen, uh, stolen Valor articles were rightful. They were proving something right. And you just can't take it because you're too much of a wimp. But it's not their fault. It's your fault for sending them threats 
and actually the guy who punched you in the face deserves a medal. He could have uh, gone a little bit uh, further though, but I think that he just punched you once and he was like, uh, he, the, the fear of God was in his heart from touching such a, an evil creature and he just went home and took a bath. He also threatened to kill him, as I say, calling them pug. And uh, all of that I already said. He went to Expos, he got mugged, so he never went to Expo again. Keep in mind, he went to the Expo with the plushie. Remember the plushie of the cat that he used to go uh, to, to film with? Which paints him as a man children. He is a little kid in his head. He is not manly at all. Who has still plushies around them like this? But it's, it's, I mean, it's one of the many things he does, like sitting in a robe, the Sparta outfit that he wore during the drama with Lane Norton, constantly trying to paint the image of a warrior, but he has no idea what it means to be a warrior. And he, of course, never accepts challenges. He always has reasons for why he doesn't accept fights. He still hasn't called me out, by the way. So, a guy who has 10 times my, my subscribers doesn't call me out. What does that even mean? He won't even say my name. Because it's like nether beasts, they're terrified. When they're facing the truth, they can do nothing but cower. It's always the same with these guys. And that's it. That concludes, I think, the epic arc of the fake Mook, which I'm not going to revisit much. I have some points that I want to make in the future. But as you can see, it's a lot. And I'll leave you with that. You can expect for next week talks about Jeff Cavalier. And I say next week every single time. Next month. Don't get your hopes up. Once a month or else you're going to OD on men's. Serge Lubre, Jeff Sad, Rich, The Orch Twins, as I said, will be covered next time. And I have gathered some of the most epic men's regarding his sexual life that is going to just blow your guys' mounds away because he brags in his comment section about having sex with cheerleaders and having MILFs on his channel, that is nothing. Compared to the stuff he says to his buddies when he thinks that he's being private, nothing. I have tales of him inventing lives of porn stars that are going to make you piss your pants. But that's going to be for another installment of the Fake Milk Character Study. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.